Okay, here's a quick follow-up lesson to the tutorial that I posted yesterday on cycles rendering in color ramps. So I just changed the size of this and it made it reminded me of a paintbrush. So I said, well, how could you make a paintbrush out of this? So I'll show you the steps. I won't show you the entire tutorial, but I'll show you enough to get started so you can do one if you want. So the hair part, well, let's do this. Let's get out of rendered mode so I can manipulate this a little bit. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn it around. So I'm going to press Alt-R. That'll clear the rotation. And then I'm going to do RX 180 and rotate it 180 and then I'll move it up here like this. I don't need that cube. Let me get rid of that. And if I want to say some kind of pointed brush, I need a way to make this thing come together to a point. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to press Shift A. And I'm going to add a force field like this. Force to this particle system. And well, let's see where it's located. Let me put it right at the bottom of that. So let's grab this real quick and do Shift S, cursor to selected that shift S selection to cursor and then I'll drag it straight down. And I know it's right down near the bottom of it but it's not coming together yet so we'll go into the force field and we'll just turn it into a negative strength. So particles are really cool because you can model with particles which is what I like to do. You can actually make buildings you know maybe like a, a roof of some of those like the DC or the Denver airport that kind of stuff. Try it with particles you'd be surprised. Particles and force fields. So now I've kind of I, br I brought it together like this, and I want to make this brush paint on this surface. So there's a couple steps involved. One is I get to turn this into a dynamic paint surface, but before I do that, I want to go into edit mode and I want to subdivide this thing like that. I can press T here, and then I can do the number of cuts just like this. Okay, forget that. Let's just do it my way. I have more control. I don't want to go too many. So that's enough. Well, I'll try one more. You need quite a bit of resolution to make this work. So I have a subdivided surface. Now go into diamond paint and get a canvas. And just for starters, we'll use, a, instead of a paint surface, we'll use a displacement surface. Sometimes it's easier to see. And then I'll go into blender render mode and work in texture mode, just because this is easier to see as well for starters. So let's see by running Alt A if we can actually make this thing affect the surface. Well, no, nothing yet. Well, that's because, well, first thing we need, forgot, we need a brush. So we need to turn this into a dynamic paint brush. Click that, brush, and we'll do it. I want to use the particle system. So I'll press that. I'll use the particle system like this. Oh, and I see something happening there. Let me run it. Alt A. Why is that? Where do those particles go? Let me see. Must have been a fluke. I don't see it happening there. I don't know what that little fluke was. Well, one of the first things I always make sure is I want to make sure that this and this are on the same layer. That's on layer two. That's on layer two, but this is on layer one. I'm just going to move this to layer two just because. Okay. That's just habit. And if I say out of the particles, I don't see the particles actually affecting that, but it will only if you change it over to an emitter. Hair particles don't affect it that I found the way at least. So now when I run this, now you can see it's painting to that to that point right there where that piece is. In fact, if I move this, you'll I get the force field. There I have the force field. And if I move it, you can see it's going to move the particles over there to an, to an extent. like that and sometimes well you could turn gravity off too because that will affect the way your particles are, are flowing so now I'm basically as I'm moving it there my particles are flowing like that but then I still don't have my brush All right so let's move this back to where it was so what I need to do is I need to come in here and I need to make a, a duplicate copy of the particle system so I'm going to make this particle system 2 and I'm going to turn back into the hair particle particle systems to the emitter. So now I have this and that in here so I should be able to press Alt A, grab this. Now we see the particles flowing down towards that point and then if I move it, okay my particles are not carving the surface now. Let me see, are they emitting enough? I don't see it affecting my surface now. What happened here? The emitter Oh, that's because I've named, I've chose that one as particle system too. So I need to go back to the 
dynamic paint to the canvas and get the other particle system too now. Alright, so there's particle system two affecting it. And then when I move this along, works like that. So you could just modify this up a bit to let me take the randomness out whoops, randomness out of there. That helps it a little bit. So it all points down there. But it's really these these force fields that really make a great deal of difference when doing that. And then you could do all kinds of other effects. You might turn this into, let's see if we can just turn this into dynamic hero particles. It's probably a bad idea because that's a really slow process here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just turn this down, turn these way down for the brush itself. Let's see if we can put on hair dynamics. Mm. Doesn't really like the hair dynamics in conjunction with this. We're going to try it anyway. Let's see. Better start it back at the beginning. Let's see. Well, it kind of gives you an idea. So it's kind of like painting with a brush. Okay, well, that's it for now. And good luck with your projects. And I'll see you in the next lesson.